Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and today I want to make your next painting project less stressful. So let's roll the intro and talk about some tools. I know, there's a bunch of videos out there to help you with painting, but today I'm going to share with you five unconventional tools that I have found over the years that help me with my painting projects. Whether or not you paint one project a year or every project that you make, these tools are going to help the project run smoother and keep the stress levels down. So let's dive into tool number one. I'm going to start with what I think is the most unconventional tool and I'm going to finish with what I think is the most underrated tool. Tool number one is a silicon soup ladle. You want to make sure that it's silicon because paint doesn't stick to it. And I know what you're thinking, it's a kitchen utensil, but it's very handy in the workshop. I don't know about you, but I've got a bunch of tins lying around the workshop, be it from the house or projects that I've painted. And over the years, I want to touch them up. So I end up taking the lid on and off. And if you just stir it up and then pour it into your paint tray or cup, you're going to end up with paint sitting in this lip. And over the years, it's going to dry out and you'll end up not being able to seat the lid on correctly and get an airtight seal. This is where the soup ladle can save you. By spooning out your paint into the tray or the cup, you stop that paint from sitting in that lip, preserving the paint and being able to create that airtight seal for years to come. They're really inexpensive. You can pick them up from Amazon, Kmart, a bunch of places. I have a couple of them lying around the workshop. And the best part for me is I let the paint build up and dry. And then I love nothing more than peeling it off to put it in the bin. With the soup ladle out of the way, let's move on to tool number two. For tool number two, let's keep on the theme of kitchen because it's glad wrap or cling wrap, whatever you want to call it. And by using this, you can preserve your paintbrush. When we're painting, it's unlikely that you're going to do one coat and walk away. You're at least going to have to do two. And especially if you want to do it across a single day, clean up in between coats can be really annoying because you're waiting for paintbrushes to dry. And if you're using an oil-based finish, in my opinion, just forget it because that's really annoying on the cleanup. But by wrapping your paintbrush when you're finished with coat one on glad wrap, you can really preserve the paintbrush and stop it from drying out. Even if you've got paint in a tray or a cup, by wrapping it up, again, you're going to save the paint because you don't really want that paint going back into the tin so you can cut down on wastage. And when it comes to coat two, you just simply unwrap everything and then keep moving and you can do your wash up right at the end. Now, I think that's the end of my kitchen tool. So let's move on to tool number three. Tool number three is a silicon mat. And as I say that, I'm pretty sure this is also a kitchen utensil. The engineer bought this for me, but when I Googled it before, I think they are used for baking. So I apologize if I lied to you before. But a silicon mat is really helpful in the workshop. It has multiple uses. As we learned before, paint doesn't stick to it. And when you're painting, we put down drop sheets and depending on what that material is, you might find that paint actually soaks through the drop sheet and then stains whatever's underneath. And if you're like me, you just end up putting paint on your workbench before you know it, your workbench is covered in paint because if you're clumsy like me also, you end up spilling it. So I put down a silicon mat under all of my painting utensils and this has saved my bacon multiple times. Also, when you're stirring your paint, where do you put the paint stick once you've finished stirring? I put it on the silicon mat because it doesn't stick to it. So it preserves the paint stick and also the surface that I'm putting it down on. And if you spill something on it later on, the paint can dry. You can just peel it right back up. And like I said before, it has multiple uses, not only handy for paint, but also for glue ups. They're really expensive. You can pick them up from Amazon in a large size like I've got here. All of the products that I'm talking about today are going to be linked down below. They are affiliate links. So if you do click on them, it is helping out the channel. It doesn't cost you any more, but I do get a little kick back on all of the tools. Go ahead, pick yourself up a silicon mat. Let's go and move on to tool number four. As I sit here about to tell you tool number four, I'm realizing that these could also be used in the kitchen. I don't personally use them in the kitchen, but I think other people do. And that is disposable gloves. I did not realize when I was planning this video that there would be a kitchen theme, but clearly kitchen utensils are handy. Now for disposable gloves, especially if you are applying an oil-based finish, having to clean that stuff off your hands with terps or something else is really, really annoying. And also I just don't think you want that chemical being soaked into your skin. It's really going to dry them out. And if you are applying a water-based finish, although the cleanup is really easy, having to wash your hands a million times on top of every other time you have to wash your hands throughout the day, you're really going to end up with dry skin. So these can really help you. Also, some people I know just absolutely hate that feeling of having paint dry on their hands. 
these will help you. You can pick them up from Amazon, really inexpensive, a bunch of different sizes. For all those people that hate the clear, you can get the black. And with this out of the way, let's turn to what I think is the most underrated tool, tool number five. Tool number five, the most underrated, the one I'm most excited about is a paint tin opener. If like me, you thought for years, no, I don't need that, I'll just use a flathead screwdriver. I'm here to tell you today, you're wrong. When you're at Bunnings, Pick up one, it'll be the best 65 cents you've ever spent. If you're on Amazon, you can pick up packs of three, packs of fives, links are below. I have a bunch of them around the workshop. I no longer use a flathead screwdriver because over the years you will end up bending out the lid and you won't be able to get the lid to seat correctly. By using this tool that has a very special look on the end, you can properly lift the lid up off the paint tin and be able to create an airtight seal for years to come. I can't tell you the number of times I'm standing at Bunnings at the paint desk. People have just spent hundreds of dollars on paint and the lovely customer service people say, would you like a paint tin open for 65 cents? They go, no, I'll be fine. Stop today, go out and get one. If you pick up no other tool from today's video, this is the one to get. There you have it, they're my five unconventional tools to help your next painting project go smooth and keep the stress levels down. I hope these tools have been helpful. If you have liked this video, you can help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons or check out the video that's about to pop up on your screen and I'll see you on the next one.